Hi everybody, Harry here with a story about one of the most horrific crimes in many a day, the murder of four students sharing a home at the University of Idaho. Three in the home, one a boyfriend, and then a fifth student who, st who saw the killer leaving and was startled and it, and it completely upended the entire town at the University of Idaho. Understandably, these are, these are crimes that are few and far between, and it seemed completely um, no trail at all. What had possibly happened, it, it had some similarities, for those of you who remember or read about it, with the Manson murders, where some stranger comes in and kills four People, why the hell would they do that? And and it was, you know, a horrific, horrific crime. Um, law enforcement has identified a suspect living all the way in Philadelphia. It seems like a very solid uh, suspect, and kind of um, th this is a this is a story. In fact, it will be coming to a movie near you almost certainly. But it's really of of a sort of traditional law enforcement achievement but with newfangled technology. All right, they knew very little. Someone had seen a, a, a 2015 white Hyundai, very common car, and they had very little to go on. There was the sheath of a knife left on the bed of one of the victims, uh, and it had a little DNA on it, and when that happens, you run that DNA against a normal database of criminals and others who have given you DNA. That didn't work. So they tried this I, somewhat controversial and certainly newfangled technology where you, as I understand it, break down the DNA into individual strands and you're able to construct a whole huge family tree of people who don't who who are within a sort of third cousin relationship of that of that DNA and there and from there then try to whittle down and find uh, potential suspects. Now, besides that, you look at phone records. That brings us to Brian Koberger, 28-year-old. Phone was not on in the hours after the murder, and they therefore, although he'd been one of hundreds of people with the, the car in question, the white Elantra, they had not followed up. When they did this so-called forensic genealogy technique with DNA, though, he came up within the big family and they looked at him more closely. And they looked at his phone records and found that he had turned off his phone in the couple hours after, which is consistent with trying to be incognito and not being caught, and then turned it on after. And more importantly, had on something like 12 occasions been there in the previous, in the months previous to the murder. The last step when you do this sort of thing, you need DNA from the suspect because that's not it's not in the database. So having zeroed in on him, found that he was in Philadelphia, already a law enforcement feat. They went back there, waited, got, as I understand it, some DNA from his garbage, did ran the match, and bingo, it matched the, the DNA that was on the sheath. So now they have matching DNA as well as the mobile phone records, and he was there as a criminology student. So he, certainly for probable cause to arrest, that's more than enough. And it looks like he might well be the guy. All kinds of questions remain, of course. Who is he? Why would he do it? What kind of sort of sick because that's you know the a crime like this uh you know uh oh a knife murder by the way that was his weapon of of four uh people and no one no one knew the story you know there's a lot to still piece together but still a very terrifying crime uh and a real coup by law enforcement to identify who could well be the person if it falls apart it falls apart but it's quite an achievement to date. Tip of the hat to law enforcement doing it right, cross-country search, finding their person.
There you have it. He showed up uh, yesterday and pleaded not guilty in court in, in Idaho. Further proceedings will un unfold, but he is subject to the death penalty there, and he knows it, and we'll, we'll see what further investigation, including pressure on him, turns up. Okay, so there you have it. The Idaho killings possibly solved and, and some real um, impressive work by uh, law enforcement nationwide. And oh, oh, when these sort of things happen, that technique I said almost certainly it involves the FBI and it did here. There you have it. We cover all kinds of criminal stuff here in addition to Trump. That's one of them I thought would interest people. Hey, like and subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel if the spirit moves you, helps us out. And we'll be uh, going back to the Trump uh, wars, different things going on in Congress, his cases, et cetera. But I thought this would be a welcome respite into old fashioned uh, law enforcement and a very, very nasty crime. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.